Chapter 12 The Last Journey Soon, we began to miss our home. In 1617, after many months in England, we decided to return to America. Before the journey, we went shopping and bought tools, clothes, jewelry, and presents. We said goodbye to our friends in London and got on the ship for the long journey home. But after one day, my head hurt, I was very hot, and there were red spots on my skin. I had smallpox. The ship's captain was worried. I'm sorry, but you must leave the ship. Smallpox is contagious, the captain said. Fortunately, we were still on the River Thames. The ship stopped for us next to the small town of Gravesend. We are in this town now. My husband John is taking care of me these days. He is very kind, but there is no hope for me now. I'm only 22 years old, but I'm going to die soon. It's very sad. I don't want to die. My son Thomas is little, and he still needs his mother. I hope he grows up to be a strong, rich man. He must survive in the white man's world, and I hope he learns about his Native American ancestors, too. Apart from my son, what else will I leave after my death? Will anybody remember me or my story? Who knows? Epilogue Pocahontas died in 1617 in Gravesend, England, and her family buried her there. John Rolfe returned to Verena Farms in America, but he died five years later in 1622. Thomas Rolfe stayed in England and studied there. At the age of 20, he returned to his father's Virginia farm in the New World. He didn't remember many words in the Powhatan language after his long time in England. Thomas Rolfe became a rich, popular man in America. He married and had children. Pocahontas's story shows us that people can be happy together in spite of differences in culture, religion, or the color of their skin. Pocahontas and John Rolfe were very happy in their short time together, and John Rolfe never forgot his beautiful Algonquin wife.